yesterday, November 17th. By the way, I, I read that some, like, some ancient historian, person, whatever, writer said that uh, he calculated that Jesus was probably born actually on November 17th, according to like Clement of Alexandria. So I thought that was interesting. My daughter's birthday. So let's talk about Thanksgiving. Well, for, the title is First World Problems. Now, first world is in the sense of there's the third world, which is countries where things are very bad. They don't have I don't know, water, running water. They don't have electricity. It's just like primitive, more or less, or bad. Then there's, deve there's developing nations, and there's industrialized, at least the way I understand it. But I'm calling the, the industrialized nations, like America. Uh, this is the first world. So I'm talking about first world problems, first world problems. So, but before that, talk about Thanksgiving. So this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. I would say that Thanksgiving is the second most important holiday in America as far as people getting into it, people getting excited about it or doing stuff. You know, there's New Year's Day, but eh, it's kind of an afterthought after Christmas. Christmas, of course, is the big deal. Fourth of July, Fourth of July, you know, in the middle of summer, it's fun, people bar barbecue, but Anyway, but, but what will people travel for is Christmas and then Thanksgiving. You know, we buy all that food, buy the turkey. And, you know, my daughter has a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving DVD. And I bought it because it had the classic Charlie Brown special that, like, that maybe I used to watch when I was a kid, where they make toast and popcorn and stuff, which I don't know if you've seen that. It has a lot of nostalgia for me. You know who Charlie Brown is, right? Peanuts. Well, I found out that on this DVD we bought, they also have the story of the pilgrims, like the Mayflower and the first Thanksgiving. And it was, it was really cool, uh, educational, and I would have liked to have just shown it this morning, but can't really. Anyway, we're not doing that this morning. I wish it would be fun. But uh, America, the history of Thanksgiving is interesting how this group of people, you know, the pilgrims came to America, and, and it's like the first year half of them died or something awful. And... And then the, they made friends with the Indians, and finally things started to turn around. And there's a whole sermon that lies therein that I'm not going to preach today. But they, they had this feast of thanksgiving. Let's give thanks to God. And it, I, I am happy that in America we have this day set aside for gratitude and thankfulness. Now, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not saying everybody in America is thankful to God or even recognizes God. But I'm, st I'm glad that it's still part of our culture. On Facebook, there's that joke that says, only in America do on Thursday we thank God for everything we have. And then on Black Friday, we run people over trying to get stuff for Christmas. <laughs> so, anyway. So, here's the question. What are you thankful for? I'm not going to take time right now to ask everybody what you're thankful for. But me think, what are you glad for? What are you glad that is in your life? What would you miss if it weren't there? So, thankfulness about focus. So thankfulness is all about what you choose to think about. This is also called focus. So when you choose to think about all of the bad stuff in your life, and then you talk about that, that's complaining. Okay? When you choose to think of all the good stuff in your life and tell God thank you for that, that's called thanksgiving. So in my life, I can think of negative things and positive things. And, you know, I can think, oh, I have a cold. Why do I have a cold? And, you know, my daughter was sick. And uh, Maddie was sick. Maddie didn't go to, get to go to the birthday party. Maddie didn't get to go to her older sister's birthday party yesterday. So, God, why did you let this happen? You know, God, uh, you know, how come things are, I'm trying to think. See, isn't that, it's good when you have a hard time thinking of bad things in your life. You know, God, how come my dad has diabetes? Dad, I mean, God, how come my sister has health problems? You know, just whatever. I can sit around and complain about that. Or I can just look and say, God, thank you for my daughters. Thank you. Thank you that Anne Marie was sick last week, but now she's well. You know, thank for, for Tammy's job. Thank for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Uh, there's, the list goes on and on, the things you can be thankful for. But it's about what you focus on. It's about what you choose to think about. Now, I want to talk about two days. One is a bad, the first day I want to talk about is a bad day in America. Now, this is just a kind of a, it's not really an extreme example, but I'm trying to make a point. I'm not saying nobody has bad things happen to them in America, but listen, we're going to talk about a, a bad day in America. So imagine with me Joe the American, Joe the American, as he has a bad day, okay? 
Joe wakes up and finds he is out of Starbucks Tanzanian Peaberry Dark Roast Holiday Breakfast Blend coffee. He gets up, you know, he wakes up in the morning and his favorite coffee is all gone. Ugh! No coffee! Ugh! It's, this is starting out to be a bad day. Okay, he's out of, out of his favorite coffee. Then as he drives to work along the highway, three people, three different people cut him off and he almost has a wreck because they're rude and, you know, get right in front of him as he's driving and he gets mad about that. So the day is just getting better. Once he gets to the office, he learns that he is being moved from a cubicle near the bathroom to one farther from it. So he had a cube in his office at his job and he was real close to the bathroom, maybe to the snack, the kitchen snack bar place too. But now they're doing an office reorganization and he's getting moved further from the bathroom. He's like, oh great. Now, how inconvenient is that? And then at lunch, he goes to a nice Italian restaurant and he spills marinara sauce, his, that red, you know, spaghetti sauce, on his nice white dress shirt. Ugh, now I've got to send this to the cleaners. I hope this comes out. Then that afternoon, this is the really bad part, he learns that, they're, that the company will only pay 50% of their usual annual bonus. So usually he gets, you know, a say a 20% bonus to his, to his salary every year. But this year, because of the economy and because business wasn't good, they're only going to pay half of the annual bonus. So instead of like $20,000, he's going to get $10,000 bonus. It's, oh man, he's really mad about this because now you're talking about his money. So he is absolutely not happy. Like this is, this is kind of a dark day for him. So then he, uh, he goes to dinner, and the waiter takes forever. The waiter takes forever to take his order. The waiter takes forever to bring their food and to bring the bill. It was just bad service. He didn't even leave a tip. He was so unhappy. Sure that this day cannot get any worse, he gets back home, and he finds out that his cat has thrown up on his leather, his suede leather sofa, because the cats do this. But I don't, anyway, I don't, we don't have a cat. And he's like, oh, now I've got to get this cleaned, and this sofa was so expensive, and now this is a mess. Oh, oh, what an awful day. And he says some real nice, bad words. Okay, and then finally as he gets into bed, he stubs his toe. Because he turns off the light, walks his bed, stubs his toe. Oh, what an awful day. Thank God it's over. That's the only thing he's thankful for. He thanks God that this awful day is over. So Joe has had a rotten day, Joe the American. So this is, this is a bad day in America, okay? You know, you're out of your favorite coffee, you find out your bonus isn't gonna be as big, uh, you know, your cat pukes on your sofa, whatever. This is a bad day in America. Now let's talk about a, a good day in the third world. I, I, I admit, I just made this up for the sake of example or illustration. So I'm not gonna say this is Pakistan or Bangladesh or wherever, but just imagine a third world nation so let's talk about Aisha. Aisha is a girl who lives in a third world country. So she's, <laughs> I must be kind of sick because she, she slept farewell. That's supposed to say she slept fairly well. She slept fairly well despite the gunfire throughout the night. So Aisha, this girl in a third world nation, she slept on her mat. There was a lot of gunfire and fighting outside, but she slept through it pretty well. She's having a good day, by the way. And her father heard about a potential job where he could make as much as a dollar an hour, and he's really excited. And he's gonna go look into this job possibility where he might be able to make a dollar an hour, okay? And she is also very optimistic. She thinks that they just might find water today because they've have been having uh, problems with the well that they did have, so they're gonna, they're gonna dig a new one. And she thinks they'll find water today, hopefully, so they'll have water to drink. Now, they know a missionary, and that afternoon, the missionary uh, brings by a bag of rice. And she's like, sweet, now we're going to have food for dinner. We don't have any meat to eat with it. We don't have any vegetables with it. But now we're not going to go hungry again tonight, because at least we'll just we'll have some rice to boil. Now, she's sad about the death of her brother. Her brother was killed in the Civil War last month in this country. But she's glad that he, that he believed the missionary story about Jesus, because this, these people... You know, there were missionaries, and they came, and they told them about Jesus, and they believed. They believed they converted from Muslim to Christianity. And even though her brother was killed, she says, my brother is in heaven with Jesus. 
And, but the good news, the really good news is she hears, that this, she hears that this civil war that's been racking her country may actually end soon. Like she hears there are peace talks. There's, there's hope for peace. So then that evening, she's reunited with her dear aunt and cousin who just returned from a refugee camp. She had an aunt and a cousin, and they had been driven from their home by the civil war. But now they finally returned. Now they've been able to return, and she's thrilled to see them. It's like Christmas for her because she gets to see her aunt and her cousin again, and they're okay. And then, but when she goes outside, she looks up and she shouts for joy as she realizes it's raining for the first time in a month because they've had this drought. And she's overjoyed. She just weeps because she's so happy because it's raining. And so for her, this was pretty much the best day ever. Okay. So you get the point. No. You get the point that what constitutes a bad day in America could be a really good day for somebody somewhere else in the world. Recently I wrote on Facebook, I was like, whatever your, whatever your job, whatever your position, whatever your family life, whatever, whatever your life is like, there's somebody in the world who is dreaming of being in your shoes. There's somebody in the world who is dreaming of having things as good as you have it. It's about your focus. It's about your perspective. It's about the big picture. Let's talk about a better set of problems. So we may not, we here in America, I'm not saying nobody in America has problems. I'm not saying nobody has trouble paying the electric bill sometimes and that nobody goes hungry or nobody is sick. But by and large, I think in America, life is pretty good. We may not realize that our first world problems are something to be thankful for, like oh, traffic. Oh, can you believe this traffic? Well, you know what? I, you know, I'm thankful to have a car. I'm thankful to have a, you know, thankful my wife has a job to drive to. I'm thankful that the air here isn't so polluted you can't breathe. This is, this is my point. This is our, an important point. You, you need to realize, or I want especially the youth to realize, that pilgrims sailed oceans, and soldiers died in battle, and pioneers faced the wilderness, and parents scrimped and saved and made sacrifices, and saints were martyred. Why? So that you and I could have a better set of problems. A better set of problems maybe than that they knew, a better set of problems than what people before them had known, okay? People who wanted religious freedom made sacrifices so that we could have it. People who didn't have much money made sacrifices so that their children could have a better life. Okay, it may be the situation in this room where people come from another nation, like China or Taiwan or Malaysia, maybe in hopes of something better. And that's not always easy. That's not always an easy transition. But people come so that the problems their children face can be, gee, I can't afford an iPhone. Instead of, gee, we can't afford food to eat. You know, it's, there's a set of problems you can choose in a sense. It's like, there's this problem of, well, I can't get my favorite coffee. I can't get designer blue jeans and I can't get, or, you know, I missed the sale at the mall or gee, I wish we had food and water and I hope we don't get shot tonight. And, and that's extreme. But, but listen, there are people in the world who don't have it, who, who do not experience, who do not enjoy the prosperity that, that you and I do, I believe. And it's not to make anybody feel guilty or feel bad. It's just to, to, to help us think, wow, we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. You know, personal example, yesterday, Maddie was sick. And like we took her to the doctor yesterday morning. And we've got this birthday party planned for Anne Marie yesterday afternoon. And so uh, it's like, wow, if Maddie's sick, maybe people won't even want to come to our house. She's contagious. You know, what if she's contagious? And even if we, we take Maddie somewhere else, while everybody else comes here, well, maybe her germs are still sticking around. Da, 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 da. And I was praying about that. I was kind of disappointed because, you know, like two years ago, Anne-Marie's birthday party got canceled because of sickness. We, like everybody was sick. It's like, man, not again. But wow, think of that. My problem is that a birth, we can't have a birthday party potentially. But I would take that problem any day over the problem of Anne-Marie or Maddie being sick in the hospital and facing death 
Do you know what I'm saying? There's a difference. Oh, I'm so disappointed my child can't have a party. We rented a bouncy house. We ended up having the party, by the way. It was so, and we had a bouncy house and made a cake, and, and it was cool. I'd much rather have that problem than have Anne-Marie admitted at Texas Children's Hospital with a potentially fatal disease, okay? So anyway, again, the point is, man, we have something to be thankful for. Listen, we talked about these people, people throughout history, even, you know, the veterans who fought battles for freedom or the pilgrims who sailed the ocean in hopes of religious freedom or just whatever. The people who protested in the street to get better rights. These people work so we can have a better set of problems. Now let's talk about God's kingdom come. So we pray God's kingdom, you know, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I hope you eat lots of turkey and dressing, okay? Or whatever you do for Thanksgiving. That's what we eat, turkey and dressing. You may not eat turkey and dressing. And on Thanksgiving, please, you know, feel free to give thanks for Jesus, your Savior. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your friends and for all your many blessings. But as Christians, I, I want you to remember, don't forget that you are here on this earth that you have a mission. And I believe that that mission is, part of the mission anyway, is to bring the kingdom of God, the influence of the kingdom of God to earth. I believe that our mission is to bring the kingdom of God, the influence of the kingdom of God to this earth. And we do that by loving people. We do that by sharing the gospel. We do that by standing up for what is right. Okay? So when God's kingdom comes, and I've, I've talked about this stuff before. When God's kingdom comes, provision overcomes poverty. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no lack. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I shall not be in want. I, I won't lack anything I need. When, when the kingdom of God comes, peace overcomes strife. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. So God, God is, God's kingdom is about a kingdom of peace, not war and, you know, in the sense of people killing each other. In the kingdom of God, healing overcomes sickness. The Bible says that Jesus came, he bore our sicknesses, our infirmities. It says that by his stripes, we are healed. And love overcomes selfishness. But, you know, the Bible says that there's no greater love that when a, than when a man lays down his life for his friends. This is all kingdom stuff. Provision, peace, healing, you know, love, joy, the list goes on. This is what the kingdom of God is about. And I believe that this is what we spread. This is when we, when we influence our colleagues and our friends and our family. This is the kind of stuff that we bring into this world. Very importantly, Forgiveness overcomes sin. Whatever your sin, whatever you've done that was displeasing in the sight of God, God, God calls and says, be reconciled. You know, there's a wall of sin between us, but because of the blood of Jesus, because of the blood of my son, you can be forgiven. And that's the kingdom of God. When Jesus comes in and his kingship is, is set up over your own heart and your own life and your sin is, is wiped away. That's the kingdom of God. And that's what we pray for. But listen, when God's kingdom come, people have something to be thankful for. People have something to be thankful for. I truly believe that, I truly believe, well, let me, let me back up and say this. I watched recently a little video online. It was a guy who had made a statistical video graph of the, how things had improved in the world over the past 200 years. And how these countries, countries where most of the people were poor and sick or whatever, how they're all, things are getting better. People are living longer and people are making more money. Now, there's more, to there's more to life than how much money you make. But it was interesting because it showed that like all over the world, so many countries, the standard of living has, has improved. You know, there's more prosperity and longer lives over the past 200 years. It's just crazy. Now, I'm not saying that in the, in the end times, before Jesus comes back, that I'm not saying that bad things won't happen. The Bible talks about that. But... I believe, that when, I believe that when things get better, that, that the hand of God has something to do that with that. I believe that when we spread the gospel to nations who don't believe it, that this changes people's lives for the better. 
I believe that people, when people live their lives in honesty and they embrace Christian ethics like, you know, working hard and telling the truth and not killing one another, that this improves people's situation in life. Listen, all that, let me just reiterate, when God's kingdom comes, when we bring the influence of heaven to earth, things get better and we have something to be thankful for. And I'm thankful for the founding fathers. I'm thankful for the soldiers. I'm thankful for people who have worked and sacrificed and given so that I could enjoy the blessings that I enjoy today in this country. It's not heaven. You know, I, I look forward to something better in heaven, but thank God. Thank God that, man, I, I, can, I have gas in my car. I can take my kid to the doctor. Uh, you know, I have food at home in the refrigerator. Thank God we have a job. Anyway, thank God. That's it. That's my last slide. Hey, maybe I did go a little bit short. Let me, let me just say this. Close out. Uh, I just want you to, to think of something that you're thankful for. So let's do this. I want you to think of one thing you th you're thankful for, and I want you to say it out loud. I'm going to go down the road, okay? So everybody think of something you're thankful for, and you're going to say it out loud. I thank God for... Okay, so y'all think... Okay. So I thank God for my children. I thank God for my daughters, Anne and Maddie. They, they are an awesome gift of God to me. All right, go. Okay, go. Amen. All right, E, what are you thankful for? Anything? Okay, what'd you say? Life? To be alive, good, because not everybody is alive. Okay, Daniel. Your home? Amen. Vicky? Huh? Family? For your family. Man, you don't you don't appreciate this stuff till you're it's gone or you're removed from it. What are you thankful for? Huh? Food? Amen. Big amen to that one. I'm thankful for food. Huh? Your family, amen. Peace and joy. Huh? Everything, everything. Okay, well, they're going to have a feast in here. So let's close in prayer. Would, you, would everybody stand up, please, if you would? Okay. Lord, I believe in the word. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for every good thing. It says something like this. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who heals your diseases, who forgives your transgressions, who redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and, love and compassion, who renews your youth, who satisfies your desires. And so we say, thank you, Lord. And even, even Lord God, I mean, God forbid it should happen to you, but even if, if every material blessing on this earth were wiped away, we would still, 